Hello, hi, how are you today? Today I'm going to talk about celibacy and celibate twin flames. And the very first thing I want to let you know about is some people, their sacred sexuality is already up. However, it's weird for them because this is how it makes them feel. They can't just orgasm. They can't be with just anyone. They seem really picky. Like they even chide themselves. I shouldn't be so picky. I should give people a chance. No, their sexuality is protected. Okay. Yes, it is true. They can't just be with anyone else because they're not here to be just, you know, a toy for someone else or even a lover for someone else. The thing that goes with that is they can't usually feel, they cannot orgasm easily, they don't get turned on. They need an actual emotional and mental emotional and deep emotional connection. They need things in order for a relationship to work. Now there are other people who are just here starting their journeys and they haven't done this already through some cycles where they've up-leveled, up-leveled, up-leveled. Or even through past lives where it was guttural and it was really root chakra based. And it's like, you got to make babies with the tribe or get these people pregnant. And like several lives later, you're here for a better relationship. That is actually how it is where it cycles and cycles and it, you know, kind of goes upwards and it up-levels. How do you know? Well, one of the ways you know is, first of all, especially if you're a female and you just can't get turned on by anyone, you think you have a type. You have a type because you have a twin flame. You don't sit there and hope that your twin flame is the type you like. You know the type because your twin flame's that type. That's the reality. And it's inherent in you. It's sort of like this nagging memory of like, hey, we set it up this way. Hey, before we were born, I know how you're going to incarnate and, you know, a little bit of the visual and how it's going to be. Other people just can't turn you on. They can't do it with, you know, simple little things or flirtation. It takes an emotional connection or none at all. There are some people who involuntarily, despite what their mind is telling them, their ego minds are telling them, hey, you have to be here with someone. Hey, you have to make babies. Or I'd really love to have a family and babies. But you really need to develop some deep discernment on that because your real twin flame may have a family started or babies, or you may make the babies together or something like that. Baby wish or getting someone pregnant and proving you can be a father these are really deeply seated root, hara, soul group, tribe connections. They're not for everyone. And part of what my guidance tells me on that is people are intended to absorb some of the unwanted children. Some children are unwanted and we could say, well, that might be their karma, except we're ending karma. People may need to take in some of those children. Nurture them, grow them, give them a family. Some people may find their family. So, you know, this is a little bit broad based, but I want to let you know that you're not broken if you do not feel turned on the way other people are. Okay. And I get it because I had friends growing up where they'd be like, oh my God, he's so cute. Oh my God, he's so cute. Or, oh my God, she's so cute. Or, oh my God, she's so sexy. Or she's so hot. And it's like, you feel like you're lost in it. You're like, I'm looking at these people like, yeah, they're a nice museum piece or a nice specimen of manliness or a nice specimen of femaleness and, and, or a nice specimen of LGBT transness or whatever blend it is that appeals to you. However, there's something in you that knows. There's something in you that remembers what your plan was. And there's something in you that's somehow saying, hold your horses. We're here for the real thing, which bring, brings me to being celibate. Okay. You should actively be celibate to honor your twin flame union and to 
conserve your love energies. You should not be squandering them by giving them to everyone else, nor should you let people be taking them, nor should you be indulging them. And a lot of people rationalize that. Well, it was oral. We didn't really have sex, meaning intercourse. And this is the reality. Any sexual interactions can drain your energy. It keeps you latched on to the collective. It drains it out. It is not enabling you to receive your full kundalini back. And that's that's the thing that is necessary on this journey. That is a proactive thing. So that is working the process. That's not trusting the process. Also, do not go through every soulmate you encounter. Develop your discernment. So this is a tip that I learned. Learn discernment. Learn to really, you know, feel. Do you even need this? Are they blocking your path? Are they blocking you from your true twin flame? Are they like, you know, a masculine energy? Okay, like, let's say if your twin is a masculine, are they clouding it up so that your twin can't even sense you? What if your twin is a feminine? Are, is that person or soulmates clouding it up so you, you two can't even sense each other, feel each other, help each other, love each other, okay? And this, this can block a lot of people and it can delay your union. It can delay your union. So there's some ways that you can know. If you're having sex or you're sexual with a karmic or a false twin, there are things that happen, pains, headaches, especially migraine headaches, because the lower parts of the body correspond to the areas up here. There are more reproductive and sexual connections up here. Headaches, yeast infections. We think of females as getting yeast infection. You can have it in your back door. You could have it on your private part if you're a male. And it happened to my ex-husband and I used to wonder. In fact, his doctor wanted to circumcise him. And I was like, why? You know, this is truly just an infection. What I didn't understand is we were already separating at that. Even if I thought he was one, he was more like a karmic. He was a karmic soulmate. Pelvis and hip pain and for a lot of males, Knee pain, ankle pain, you're not moving forward. If you're not moving forward, you're going to feel the pain. The minute you fish or cut bait and you cut loose of the things that would hold you back and you stop having sex with karmics or false twins, you're going to find that some of those metaphysical pains go away pronto. You do not feel good after sex. After sexual relations, flirtations, being together, even cuddling, you don't feel good. Why? It can't be sustained with a karmic or a false twin. Only with your twin flame. The energy might feel like you're trying to hold it together with a karmic or false twin, and it just keeps flitting out and going to who it really, truly needs to go to. No orgasm. And for some people, they're kind of like, well, I get other things out of it. I'm cuddling. I have spoken to a percentage of women that don't even know if they've ever had an orgasm. And some people would say like, well, why? What's the point? But inside them, they're being very obliging. They're being a good girl or a good boy or whatever. And this also points to people's abuse issues. How do you know that these karmics or false twins are not just dumping and hammering their abuse issues into you. A lot of people look for alleviation or like relaxation through sex. We are told lies that being with anyone, being with plenty of fish in the sea, that is giving you a healthy sex life. And it is not. It is for people who are activated. This is what happens. Okay. Chronic yeast infections, chronic pains, chronic headaches. Pay attention. These are the clues that your light body is giving you to shove off. You feel allergic to this person, okay? You are not here to endure a false twin. So even if you think they're a narcissist and they're mean to you and they run away and they ghost you and they roll around again and you get a little intimate, 
that that's your twin flame. You better develop your discernment on that and work with your light body with me so that it can really tell you who is this person in the grand scheme of things for you, not for me, not for me. We've all had to be with false people. We've all had lives, past lives, with some really icky people that we had to endure, okay? You're not intended to repeat that. Maybe repeat it a little bit and catch on and move along, heal it, clear it, and move on. So what happens if you feel allergic to this person? Hives, eczema, acne, other kinds of skin breakouts. Emotional breakouts will break out through your skin. Now, sometimes there could be a dietary cause. Sometimes there's like a vicious cycle. They stress you, you stress eat, you binge, you binge eat or drink, you feel more stressed and your body's just, you know, you can't get any relief through sex. And next thing you know, you're just like a hot mess and breaking out in places, having a rash, having a rash in your private parts, having a rash or pain, you know, breast pain. There's a reason that uh, some of us through our cycles, we feel a lot of aches and pains all over. Our bodies need to alleviate pains of being, you know, with the results of sex with people that never loved us. They never loved us. Now, what if you're a married twin flame? There's a lot of people that, you know, watch videos or have an awakening and an activation and they dream of real love. You can't pretend that your spouse is your twin flame even much as you'd like to think, well, maybe I married my twin flame. That's the ticket. I'll go with that. And yet, little by little, you feel obligated. It's exhausting. You can't get along. You keep hoping and praying that somehow they get hit by a car and it'll take the decision right out of your hands. I know how it is. I... have I've heard it for years and I've even had certain thoughts of like, why do I have to decide? Why can't God just do some of this? So you feel obliged. You're sleeping in separate rooms. You're unable to focus during the act. You feel like it's a chore. Now, counselors, marriage counselors, they will tell you, oh, yeah, the magic fades, but you can learn to love each other. Try these toys and tricks and lubes and all this stuff. And it doesn't cut it because what you're really here for is twin flame. You're here for the real thing with the whole package. We're just seeing each other. You're ready to like, you don't need all those outside accoutrements to complete you. You need the other energy that belongs to you to complete you. So you're unable to focus, unable to orgasm, no foreplay helps. Other things that don't work, just say no to polycules, cults. That means polyamory, more than one person, love triangles. Love triangles are weird. If you love someone who's married, how do you not know that your energy is being sucked out to go support their spouse? Think about it. Stop triangulating your energies. Pornography, just say no to porn. This is a movement amongst men, the no fap. They are realizing that it sucks out it, pretty much the joy, the life. It keeps them hooked in and it's a movement. It's a healthy movement. We want to encourage people, don't be involved with something don't watch something. Don't pay your money for it, your hard-earned money for something that love is coming to you. Love, real love, okay? So people feel this sometimes naturally from the inside out. Like, hey, I need to stop this. Hey, this isn't a real relationship. Or it might be safe. I'm not catching anything. Nobody's getting pregnant. But it's kind of empty because this is how it feels for real twin flames who are activated begins to feel empty and empty and empty and lonely and there's no intimacy. Friends with benefits is just more of a game plan. Friends with benefits, I'm going to tell you, is bullshit after a while. Because some people, yeah, maybe when you're young, you're like, I don't really want to be obligated. I want no strings. I don't want to have to take this person and dinner, meet the family. Okay, but what you're going to find when you're twin flame you want all those things. 
You want the legitimacy of a real relationship with everything. Everything is coming together. And it's not just me saying it. It's a feeling. It feels like that's the way it should be. It feels like we're divinely married, so she's, we should be married. It feels like if I'm connected to this person, we should have everything together. Everything should be living in harmony around us. Yes, revolve around you, not the other way around. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. So prevent draining out your vital life force. Sex in the lower chakras, in the lower parts of your what you might think of as the home entertainment area of your body, the baby making area, whatever. It love feels like sex. You move that up, it feels like love. I'm an expert in helping you to clear your sexual energy and help you feel love and it is most important from now going forward we're in sort of the two years where there is a huge push 2024 to 2026 to uh shove people together who are supposed you know little by little get them situated stop the ends of the extremes i'm in pain and you're feeling no begin to come together okay now, this is for anyone who, wherever you identify on the sacred spectrum of sexuality, which isn't sex, it's how do you identify? What is the blend of your masculine and feminine? Two energetics in duality. You have two gender bodies, but within you, you have the blend that fits together, which is why some women will say, I feel like I'm the more masculine or some men will say, I feel like I'm carrying the feminine or whatever. There's no hard and fast rule, but you do have one match, one match through the etheric body. And these things, clearing your energy is what we are specialists in. So I hope this helps you. Please like and subscribe. I'm Patricia. This is my channel. Check out my website, twinflamereconnection.com. Thank you. Bye.